everyone, it's Blake with Northwinds Wilderness School. Um, welcome back to another week of our hopefully weekly tracking series. Um, when we set out today to make this video, my hope was to do a video on raccoon tracks. Um, for some reason lately, there's been an explosion of people posting raccoon tracks online and asking, is this an otter? Is this a coyote? Is this a chupacabra? Is this a Bigfoot? Whatever it is. And they all turn out to be raccoon tracks. And there's certain things you can look at within a raccoon track to positively identify it. And I was hoping to show you that today. But we've been out walking on frozen lakes. We've been out to a frozen river. We've been out walking in a frozen woods. We've gone and checked along the sides of roads and we have not been able to find a raccoon track. However, what I have found is a bunch of really cool looking, really old tracks and only a couple fairly fresh tracks. So I thought maybe this would be a cool opportunity to talk about track aging. Now, just to be right up front, I'm not an expert in track aging. I will leave that to uh, Kersey and Lee. Um, but I can show you a few things that I think will help you on your track aging journey. Track aging is a very important part of track and sign interpretation and of trailing. Thus, it's an important part of being a tracker. Because if you can't tell how old a track is, then you don't know when the animal was there. You don't know how far away it might be. You don't know if it's fresh enough to follow. So if you learn just a few tricks about how to identify fresh tracks versus older tracks, you'll have a leg up on the competition. And snow complicates things. Snow makes tracking more difficult. It seems like it might be the opposite because the snow is deep, the animal steps in, you've got long impressions. But the way snow melts and freezes makes it very difficult to identify species and age. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of tricks right now. Okay, you're going to have to go with me on this a little bit because I'm about to compare a deer track to a human track. And I apologize for doing it. I just didn't really see any other way to do it. So if you'll look right down here, hopefully it's obvious. This is the human track. I just made this one second ago. This is the deer track. Obviously, this is several days old. Let's talk about what we can see and how we can tell. So look at my track. You'll see the details of the tread pattern in my shoe that are not crumbly and they're still in place. And you'll see a nice crisp line around the top edge of this track. And you're gonna see that all the debris in the bottom of the track is either pushed down in or you can see lines in the snow where it has been pushed down in and then sprung back up when I lifted my foot. Now let's look at this deer track. These edges are all rounded and bled out. There's no crispness, no sharpness. You can also see there's debris in here. Let's just look out into the woods for a minute. Do you see any rapid succession of leaves falling? Do you see leaves falling at all? Look at this oak tree right here. Let's watch it for a minute and see how many leaves fall. Looks like none to me. So we look back down here, you can see in this one little tiny area, we've got one, two, three oak leaves that indicate this track has been here long enough for three oak leaves to fall into this small area. We've also got pine needles in here. We've got part of a red oak leaf in here. There's tons of debris in the track. Plus, there's no hard ridgeline detail of the hoof print. So we can tell that that track is several days old. In a minute here, I'm going to show you a couple of clips of some tracks that I found where I can kind of lay out in detail what I'm seeing and how I can tell. Um, a few things here. You want to pay attention to the weather where you're tracking. Here, three or four days ago, it was 37, 40, 42 degrees. And then it went from that to like two degrees the next day to like zero the next day. And now it's in the 20s. So what we can expect is that we had a couple days where the snow was melting and everything was slushy. 
and then it froze hard to solid ice and now things are warming back up again so it's not warm enough that things are going to be melting but they might be softening up a little when you pay attention to the weather where you're tracking it makes it easier to identify what's going on such as here we can see where it's all melted out around here so this was made before those warm days all this debris has fallen it's been pretty windy so we can assume that these leaves were blown out of the trees and they were probably rolling along the ground and got caught down in here. And then we can look at my track and say, it's mid twenties, there's very little wind. All of the debris in the track is smushed down and there's sharp, crisp edges and fine detail in the ridges. Now, this is just one small example of a way to tell the age of a track. Getting down to the fine detail of was this track made today or earlier this morning or late last night can be a little more challenging. Um, right where we're standing, I don't have any good tracks, but there, there are times when you can look at a track and say, like, it was for sure made today, probably early this morning, and you can base that on... Um, the condition of the track, the um, maybe debris that's been blown into the track. If it rained this morning and I see a fresh track now, I know that that track was made after it stopped raining because the rain would wash out the track or at least put pock marks in it. You know, if it's snowing, if an animal steps and then it snows on top, you'll see fresh snow in the track. Whereas if it had snowed this morning and I can see clear marks of palm pads or toe pads or claws or hoof marks, then we know that track took place after the snow. When you don't have hard meteorological evidence like rain or snow or heavy winds, it can get a little bit more challenging. And then what we're looking for is... Um, hard ridgeline uh, details in the tracks. Is there a hard palm pad or a hard hoof print or the track of my shoe that hasn't had any wind damage, it hasn't bled out at all, it hasn't had any debris in it, then you're probably looking at a fresher track. Now, I'm gonna go uh, show you a few tracks that I found and we'll talk about how I can tell that it's older or newer and maybe a few things for you to look at. Um, I'll be right back. All right, I found another kind of tricky one here. It, uh, for just a second, I thought this trail was fresh, and then I remembered what I just said to you a couple minutes ago. So take a look at this. All right, check out this deer track right here. <clears throat> we have ice crystals standing on the edge right here, and we have a nearly perfect hoof imprint. But if we reach down in here and touch it, that is hard ice. <clears throat> As much it would be cool to say this deer stepped down into hard ice and left a perfect track, I know that in the last couple days it's been upper 30s uh, to 40s and everything's been melting. And then it got really, really cold down into the zeros and the one degrees, which indicates to me that this track is several days old because most likely... When it was in the upper 30s and 40s, everything was melting. This deer stepped here, left a deep imprint, and then everything froze and got hard and turned that track into ice. A deer is not heavy enough to leave a track like that in hard ice. It, um, unfortunately, they're just not that big, but it indicates to me that this track is probably several days old. Look at how nice and clean that track looks. Look at how nice and clean that track looks. But after about one second of looking at it, I realized you can see how washed out the edges of this track are. Look right here. There's nothing crisp. This is rounded and washed out. Also, look at how much debris has fallen into this track. That wasn't there. That wasn't there. That grass wasn't there. And again, when I reach down in here, this is hard ice. Remember what I said before, it was warm a couple days ago and everything started melting and then it got really cold out. So this track is probably three or four days old at least because a deer simply cannot make that much of an impression in hard ice. Also, these washed out edges and how melted out this is indicate this trail 
no matter how good these tracks look, is three or four days old. Now this is a fresh deer track in the snow. Notice the center line, how the edges are crisp, and how the debris is smashed down into the track, and how the only debris in the track that isn't smashed down is sitting on top of the track. That is a fresh deer track in the snow. That track was definitely made today, most likely <clears throat> early this morning. Recognizing fresh tracks in the snow is challenging, but it can be done. So I, I hope that you've learned at least something about track aging in snow. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm not an expert. It's something I'm still learning, but it's something that I work on on a fairly regular basis to help train my eye and my mind to recognize fresh tracks in the melee of older tracks. That way I will know which ones to follow or which ones to try to interpret versus finding an old track and saying, you know, maybe that one is good, maybe not. Let's just follow it and see where it goes. It, th there's some science that you can employ. There are some hard facts and hard evidence that you can employ to, to help identify fresher tracks versus older tracks. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. Um, if you have anything to input, I would love to hear what you have to say. I'm always learning. I love hearing what other people have to say about it. If you learned anything from this video, please find a friend to share it with. Um, otherwise, as always, I appreciate every second of your time. Thank you for watching. I'm Blake from Northwinds Wilderness School. Have a good day. Hey, so we've been home from shooting video for a while now, and I'm just out walking my dog, and I noticed something that I thought was interesting and pertinent to this video, so I thought I'd show it to you. Sorry, that was the leash. All right, look at this. This track looks kind of washed out to me. The edges here are a little washed out. There's debris down in the track. But this track is less than one minute old, made by my dog, who wa apparently wants to see it in the video. Say hi, Truvy. <laughs> well, look, here's another one. Where you get to watch it being made. Now look how much debris fell down into that track and how there's no detail. But look at how crisp and clean these edges are. Oh, look, a leaf just fell into it. Wow, we're doing some cool investigating right now. So if I came across this in the woods, I'd be hard pressed to tell that it's fresh, except let's get that leaf out of there. Look how clean and crisp these edges are. And even on the debris, these little ice crystals are standing up. There's crisp edges on the debris. So when we say that snow makes tracking difficult, this is what we're talking about. It's very, very difficult to tell fresh tracks from old ones unless you look for the very, very small details. Sorry to come back like that after the video, but I thought it was worth showing you. So I hope you enjoyed it.